Let's talk about cellular respiration and look at what are the reactants, we'll put those in red. What are the products, we'll put those in blue. Cellular respiration is just the opposite of what photosynthesis is. And so our reactants are going to be 6O2, or 6 oxygen, plus C6H12O6, which is glucose or sugar. And that's going to give us our 6 CO2, 6 carbon dioxide, 6 water, and then ATP, which is going to be our energy, which is what we can use for cell processes. Whenever we look at cell respiration, what is important to remember is that all organisms do this. So all organisms do cellular respiration, plants included, because all organisms are going to need energy. So we're going to have our reactants. So we have our oxygen, we have our glucose. Remember our glucose is long-term chemical energy. And so we breathe in our oxygen, we eat our glucose, and then we're going to get out our products. So we're going to get out ATP, which is again our short-term energy, water, and then carbon dioxide. All of these processes for cellular respiration, for eukaryotes, they are going to take place inside of the mitochondria. So whenever we, if we're looking kind of inside of a cell and we're blowing up what that looks like, so we're looking at our cell, then we're gonna go ahead and color our mitochondria yellow. So our mitochondria are going to be the organelles that are going to perform cellular respiration. They're commonly called the powerhouse, but this is because they help to create all of that ATP and all of that energy which organisms need. So if we expand upon what the mitochondria looks like, this is what we would see. What you should notice, I'm just going to color it yellow as well, but what you should notice is that it also has a double membrane just like the chloroplast, and again this is what we talked about with the endosymbiotic theory. For our mitochondria, we have our outer membrane, we have our inner membrane, We have our mitochondrial matrix, which is going to be the space. So mitochondrial matrix. This is gonna be the space inside of the mitochondria. And then we also have what's called the cristae. And these are going to be the folds of the inner membrane, kind of similar to the thylakoids in chloroplast. So we have the cristae, which are the folds of the inner membrane, and this is where the electron transport chain is going to take place, or the ETC. And we'll talk about the electron transport chain later on. The mitochondria is going to be the site of aerobic cellular respiration. Let's take a look at some of the specific parts of aerobic cellular respiration that happens inside of cells and specifically then inside of the mitochondria as part of that. For cellular respiration, we're going to transfer chemical energy in the form of glucose, which will be a long-term energy storing compound, into chemical energy in the form of ATP, which is our short-term energy storing compound. So we're going to have three basic steps for aerobic cellular respiration. We will have number one, which is going to be glycolysis. This is going to be how the sugar or the glucose is converted into something called pyruvic acid. Glycolysis is always going to happen whether it's aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration. The second step will be that we have the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. This is going to take place inside of the mitochondria, and this is going to use the products of glycolysis in order to make 
uh, to move forward into aerobic cellular respiration. The third step is going to be our electron transport chain, or the ETC. So this is our electron transport chain, or the ETC. And again, these, this electron transport chain is on the cristae, which is the foldings of the inner membrane. We'll start by looking at glycolysis. So glycolysis is going to take glucose, which is one of our reactants, and it is going to make glucose into an intermediate called pyruvate or pyruvic acid. The other things that will happen in this process is that we will have ADP, which is going to be something that we'll color in brown because we're going to call it a electron acceptor or an electron acceptor or an energy acceptor. And then we have NAD plus. This is similar to what we saw in photosynthesis, where we have electron acceptors that are going to then carry the energy from one part of the cycle to the next. So we have our electron acceptors, and they are going to be transformed in glycolysis into ATP. Specifically, we will get two ATP, and then we will get NADH. I'm going to color these orange because these are going to be short-term energy storing compounds, which is what we have written over here and the same thing that we did for photosynthesis. So these are gonna be short-term energy storage. I'm also gonna grab my blue and just put a box around my ATP because that is one of the final products uh, that we have in cellular respiration. So from glycolysis, if we're going through aerobic cellular respiration, so we're, we're going to say if oxygen is present, then pyruvate or pyruvic acid will go into the Krebs cycle, which is step two. So pyruvic acid comes in, and what's going to happen is that there's going to be a series of steps that takes place that's going to help to break down the pyruvic acid and release the energy that is basically kept inside of the bonds there. What happens is, is that we have some more of these electron acceptors. So we have NAD plus and we have ADP, or sorry, FAD plus. These are gonna be electron or energy acceptors. They're going to also come into the cycle. So they're gonna come into the cycle and then they are going to produce those short-term energy acceptors, which are gonna be NADH and FADH2. So these are gonna be our short-term energy storing compounds that are then going to be used in the electron transport chain. I'm just gonna color them in orange so that we're staying consistent. In the Krebs cycle, so we put in the pyruvate, which is an intermediate that forms at the end of glycolysis. It, with the Krebs cycle, we're going to release carbon dioxide. So we're gonna get carbon dioxide as one of our products. And then we'll also get a little bit of ATP. So we'll get two ATP as the pyruvic acid moves through this cycle. Okay, so we get some of our products here. And remember that ATP is also considered to be a short-term energy storage compound. So I'm just gonna color it orange as well. Okay, so electron transport chain is going to use the short-term energy storing compounds that we made earlier, and it's going to use that in order to form a lot of ATP. So most of the ATP is going to be formed during this electron transport chain. So we're going to have the NADH from glycolysis, that's going to go into the electron transport chain, and then the NADH and the FADH2 from the Krebs cycle also go into the electron transport chain. So what's going to happen with the electron transport chain is that the first kind of step is that we're going to pass the electrons from these short-term energy acceptors, so from NADH and FADH2. These electrons are going to go down the electron transport chain, which is essentially a series of proteins that's in the membrane. And then after they're passing the electrons kind of at the end of the line, then oxygen is going to be the final electron acceptor. So it's gonna accept the electrons and then it's going to join 
hydrogen to form water. So we have our oxygen up here. This is one of our reactants, so this is our second reactant. It's going to come into the electron transport chain and be the final electron acceptor. If there's no oxygen, then this process doesn't work and the cell then stops making as much energy. The electron transport chain then will be responsible for the formation of water. And so that's one of our products at the end of this. And then the last and probably most important step is what we call chemiosmosis. And so ATP synthase, which is a protein we had talked about before, is going to form ATP by chemiosmosis. This process is essentially the flow of a concentration gradient that really spins something that looks a little bit like a turbine. Um, it's pretty complex, but very interesting. So if you want to know more about that, just let me know. Um, but this is then going to produce all of the ATP or the majority of the ATP. So whenever we look at this, we're looking at 34 or about 34 ATP that are going to be formed. We form about 8, 34 ATP because it's not clear how efficient the process always is, um, but this is what we can kind of expect overall. So if you look at the totals, whenever we look at total ATP from this entire process, from glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain, we get about 38 ATP from each molecule of glucose. Whenever we look, obviously the majority is coming from that electron transport chain. Just to make sure that you have the perspective on here, since we didn't do it to begin with, the cell we'll say is the brown dotted line. That's going to be this outside portion here that contains uh, all of the reactions. The mitochondria will be yellow, like we had colored on the front, so our mitochondria will be here. Notice that the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain both happen there, and they are both part of aerobic respiration. The cytoplasm will color in green. That is where glycolysis takes place. And so glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell. This is going to happen uh, always. So glycolysis happens all of the time. If oxygen is present, then they will move to the Krebs cycle in the electron transport chain. As we're looking, we're just gonna go back up to the top and let's grab purple. So purple is going to be representing our long-term energy storage compound. So that is our glucose up here. So our glucose is long-term energy and are gonna put a box around our glucose up here as well. So we're gonna transform our chemical energy, which is long-term energy in the form of glucose. And it's going to transform that into chemical energy, into our orange chemical energy, which is going to be our short-term chemical energy. Whenever we look at cell respiration, we put in glucose, we put in oxygen, and we get out a bunch of ATP, carbon dioxide, and water as well.